How's it going everyone and good evening and uh, my name is Miguel Fuentes and I'm going to be your lecturer for today and uh, today we're going to be uh, doing a little bit of a uh, Bible study on systematic theology uh, lecture for 15 and um, I hate to say it you know but we're, we're going we're going to close this this week uh, with the study of the end times and uh, so before we start, let's pray first. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for all that you have done. Father, I just pray right now, Lord, that you would uh, give me wisdom and understanding, Lord, of your word. Lord, help us, Lord, to understand uh, the things of God, Lord. And Lord, we ask in the, name of, in the name of Jesus, Lord, that we repent, we confess our sins unto you, Lord, and we, and we plead the blood of Jesus over our lives. We thank you, Lord. We praise you in Jesus' name. I pray, Amen and Amen. All right, so it's gonna be our last, last, the last uh, lecture of the series. So, the study of eschatology is the study of the the end things, um, and and also um, the study of these future events that will happen to individuals. Uh, it's sometimes called personal eschatology, um, and and we see all the end time stuff in Matthew chapter twenty four. Excuse me, Matthew chapter twenty four verse forty four. Um. Uh, and it reads, therefore, you also must be ready for in an hour when you least expected the Son of Man is coming. Okay, so we understand that Jesus Christ is coming. Uh, let's take a look at Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2. Verse um, 12 and 13. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly desires, we should live soberly, righteously, and in godliness in this present world as we uh, await the blessed hope and the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. And then in first John chapter five first John chapter five verse nineteen We know that we are of God and the whole world lies in wickedness. Okay. Well, uh, I don't know why. Okay. Anyway, so the first, uh, the first thing I want to say, uh, the signs of, you know, retaining of Christ's return. Um, we see this in Matthew chapter uh, twenty-five, uh, preaching the gospel, preaching the gospel to all nations, false prophets working, uh, sign, you know, false signs and wonders. Uh, signs in the heavens and salvation of Israel. Now let's take a look at the millennialism or actually millennium. Now the word millennium uh, means 1,000 years. So there's three views of millennial. There's uh, our millennial uh, for, for a short of this video no future. Uh, B, uh, post post millennialism, Christ will return after the millennial reign. And uh, in pre millennialism is before Christ comes back. So I'm I'm basically I'm C. I'm pre millennial pre rapture. 
believer. Uh, I totally believe that in scripture. It backs up with scripture. Anywho, uh, the final judgment and eternal punishment. Uh, we can read this in uh, Revelation 20. I should never read to you that scripture. Revelation 20. Revelation 20, 11 through 15. Then I saw a great white throne, and him who was seated on it from his face to the earth, and the heavens fell away, and no place was found for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. Books were opened, another book was opened which is the book of life. The dead were judged according to their works as recorded in this book, uh, so in the book. The sea gave up the, the dead who were in it, and death and Hades deliver up the dead who were in them. And they were judged each one by his works. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire this is the second death. Anyone whose name is not found in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. You hear that, folks? You hear from, from, from the Apostle John here who saw this in, in his vision. That those who those name is not found in the book of life will be cast out in hell. Plain Simple. That what scripture tell, uh, tells us. And we see this again in Matthew chapter 25. Verses 31 through 46. Which I, I'm not going to read but. Um, so uh, I encourage you to read Matthew chapter 25 through 31 through 46. Number one, you gotta understand that Jesus Christ will be the judge. Okay? You gotta understand that people would like to teach that God is a loving God. That's true. However, God is also the God of judgment. I mean, we see this in the Old Testament and we see this in the New Testament. That's why the Holy Spirit killed Ananias and Sapphira because they lied to the Holy Spirit. That, that that that's how it is, you know. That that's what's called tough love, as they say. But again, Jesus Christ will be the judge, and will be judged by our works, either our names is in the book of, book of life or not. Number two, the unbelievers will be judged, and we see this in Romans chapter two, verses five through seven. Remember that we did a sermon on uh, Romans chapter two. And also in Matthew chapter twelve verse thirty six, we said that we see that there. Number three, believers will be judged. Uh, we see this in Romans chapter fourteen verse ten, and Second Corinthians chapter five verse ten. Four, the angels, the angels of God will be judged. First Corinthians chapter six verse three. Okay, so. Let's talk about hell. Yes, you know, it's, it's good to talk about hell because it's in the scriptures. And that it is so important to the fact that Jesus Christ also preached about hell. You know, some people don't like to hear hellfire and brimstone. But understand this, tough love will always going to warn you ahead of time. doesn't matter, you know, if you're good or bad. Save or not, hell is going to be preached at some form or another. Because you got to understand, when you are a preacher of the word, you got to preach the full counsel of God, no matter what. You know, I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. I'm not going to, uh, you know, it's not going to sugarcoat. Because the word of God made it plainly clear 
that hell is eternal. There is no purgatory. There is no, you know, the, 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 there's no ticket out of hell free card. I don't know. But, you know, got to understand that hell is real and that hell is an eternal punishment. And we, read, and we read this in Luke chapter 16, verses 22 to 24. In Revelation chapter 14, verses 9 through 11. There will be the new heaven and the new earth. We see this in Isaiah chapter 66, verse 1. We see this in Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. And 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 22. Look it up. So... We're going to close with a conclusion of this lecture series, man. It, it's been a blast. I hope you guys enjoy, man. Um, been been thinking a lot lately. You know, I may have to take a break for, oh, well, we'll see. But, you know, the Lord really, really wanted me to do this, sound, do this series for a reason. Is that, number one, that doctrine does matter. Doctrine does matter. See, you got to avoid false doctrines and, and really search out the scripture on your own. And it's great that you are studying systematic theology in your Bible college or seminary, but it is very, very important to search out the scripture to make sure that this is actually biblical rather than the professor saying so. Um... Because number two, the word of God is the sword of the spirit. Because it, you know, the word of God just pierces through bones and marrow, soul and spirit, the intent of the heart and mind. Man, I tell you, when I when I first started this, uh, reading the whole entire Bible within two months, well, every 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 other two months, it changed my life around. Uh, sorry, guys. Uh, Woo. Ah, oh, stuffy nose. But anyway, I understand that just that the Word of God is the must read book to read every single day. You know, I read devotionals, and right now I'm I'm getting into a new book called uh, Im Immunology, which is the study of the immune system. Um, but the those stuff are great, but the greatest thing that I always read is the Word of God. Uh, th that that really helps me to not only to stay focused on God's Word, but also to pray that the Holy Spirit was showing things through the Word of God. Uh, I think that's the most important part. Number three, prayer is a must to understand the Scripture. You know, let the Holy Spirit teach you. Period. Uh, you know, I don't care what favorite pastors or preachers or teachers that you may listen to. But understand, to truly understand the scripture, you got to have the Holy Spirit showing you things. And, and that you are writing down what the Holy Spirit is showing you in scripture. If, you're not, if you are not doing that, you will be snared to false doctrine. And I've seen this a lot, folks. I see this a lot because they trust on either Joel Osteen or either they trust T.D. Jakes or or either they trust Damon Thompson or, or whoever favorite preachers or teachers understand that it is very, very dangerous to rely on them. You should be relying on the Holy Spirit, which is a cheat, which, which is the teacher that shows you all the truth. <laughs> okay. Uh, number four, uh, my last point: speak the truth in bonus. Um, I actually encounter well, I always try to preach the truth in bonus, but the only thing that really bothers me is that. You know, the fear of man. Because if you fear man, you're, you're going to be compromising a lot of stuff. 
and that uh, you're gonna compromise the word of God, and that uh, you're gonna be soft, and it's not gonna be good. That's why we need the Holy Spirit to strengthen us, to help us be bold in speaking the truth in the word of God. Period. That, that's how it is. So, uh, so I I uh, I hope that you enjoy this teaching of systematic theology. If you haven't taken systematic theology like as a seminary course, I highly recommend it. Um, study it, understand it, read a scripture about it, and um, and also write a paper about it. You know what you learn and always study the scripture to show yourself approved this is the most important part do your own bible study uh about any topic or any passages of scripture because the only thing that that will help you to grow is to have a long time by yourself with no laptop no whatever no no radio Sit down, sit down on your desk, get your Bible out, get a, uh, a small notebook, start taking notes, start taking notes, because the Holy Spirit will show you, will show you a lot more than a commentary, I can tell you that right now, and so, yeah man, so I hope that you, you guys enjoy this sermon, uh, this Bible study series on systematic theology. Now I don't know what topic that the Lord wanted me to to teach next Wednesday, but I'll let you know probably on Sunday. Um, and right now I'm going through some type of word wilderness right now. You know the Lord really pounding me like crazy about you need to spend time with the Lord. Um. To spend time more with him and and to uh, yeah, so I'm I will be doing that um, and so I, I just felt led to do that. So I hope you guys have a great week. Uh, may God bless you, and I'll see you guys later. <laughs>